Here we go. I'm here with uh, former Chicago Bull, three-time NBA world champion, and uh, current Charlotte Hornet front office scout, Dickie Simpkins. Dickie, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy day to join me. No problem, no problem at all. Appreciate it. Dickie, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about your Chicago Bull playing days. You were part of the record-setting 72-10 and 10 squad. You played with arguably the greatest player of all time in Michael Jordan and played for arguably the greatest coach of all time in Phil Jackson. Of the three NBA championship teams you were a part of, is one more special than the others? I think uh, the last, the 98 championship, I would say is the most special one. And the reason why that's the most special one is because when the season started, we kind of knew that was going to be the last run. So every, you know, Coach Jackson had that conversation before we started, and uh, it made it more special to be able to win the whole thing. And then it was the last championship and the last time that that whole group was together. So I would say the last championship, 98, was the most special. I know that Mr. Jordan values his privacy, but can you share with our audience maybe one tidbit that would uh, provide some insight as to why he was as great as he was? I think uh, the first thing is the competitiveness on everything that he did. Um, that's one major reason why he was as good as he, as good as he was. I think the second thing is just his approach, his approach to the game from a mental standpoint, not just game, but practices, he practiced I think one of the few things people know is that he practiced every day. Like he wasn't taking practices off. He could score 55 points in a game, have back-to-back, -back, you know, 50 points, 45, and that next day he was he was practicing and energetic in practice. Not sure, like sure. not like this is a, a drag. And he was as competitive as uh, anything. And then I think the last thing is just his whole professional approach to the game and the business part of basketball and still be a real a real guy, you know, amongst his teammates. Obviously, like you said, very private. We were family. Um, but I think those three things are what sure, sure. competitiveness, his approach mentally, and then it's just his professional um, attack as far as the game and the business part. Coach Jackson is often uh, referred to as the Zen master for his unorthodox motivational tactics. Can you recall when you played for him any non-traditional methods that he used on you to try to motivate you to becoming a better player? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, it is, it's funny because I, I heard Shaq one day talk about it on TNT. Phil used to light this, I think they call it sage, or she used to light this <laughs> this thing and hang it up and the smoke would go around the room and it had a pretty interesting smell to it that <laughs> a non-traditional smell to it that was uh, pretty funny I think the first time when I went to the Burrow Center where we practiced that and I smelled it I was like what's going on up here so I was like so then when we went in the film room you could see he had it hung up and um, it was like almost like some straw hay type of stuff that he would light, almost like an incense, and it just had a peculiar smell to it. Gotcha. But it was supposed to kind of clean the air, okay. and help everybody get their mind right. And I think the other thing that Phil did that was pretty interesting that I had never done is, you know, we got into a lot of um, meditating, visualizing success. You know, just closing our eyes and kind of just being in the moment. Um, I think that was big from sure, a mental sure. standpoint that I had never, never done in my life, but was very receptive to it. When he asked you guys to visualize, did he ask you to visualize, you know, team success? You know, there are some some college coaches will actually have their team practice cutting down the net to simulate winning a championship, or did he have you visualize? you excelling in your individual role that will help the team achieve its goals? He had us do both. It was a combination of both. Um, visualizing the team success, but visualizing your part um, and your role in a successful way that helps for that team success. 
and visualizing the moment and almost being in the moment. We would always talk about being in the moment. So when that moment came, you would be able to react and instinctively react and do what you need to do as far as your role. But it was a combination of, it was a combination of both. And we would do it, that would be sometimes a practice day. We would do it on the road, um, in the hotel. Uh, so I thought that was, I thought that was big. And then I, the last thing he did that I thought was pretty interesting that everybody pretty much knows, he gave everybody a book. Mm -hmm. So I just remember me being a rookie and uh, he gave me my particular book. And I had to, I don't know if everybody else read their books, but I had to read my book. It was gonna be some homework. Yeah, book report. Man, huh? I had a book report to do. <laughs> but then we had another book that was kind of for the whole team. Okay. And I, since I was a rookie, before every practice at home, I had to read this book in front of the team. It was like a daily type motivational passage type book. Sure, sure. So um, I had fun with it. I thought it was cool, and, and and I'm you know I'm I'm always intrigued with that type of mental part of the game. So I kind of had fun with it. Had the guys laugh, and whenever I had to read every you know read it before the team, so I would make it kind of like a sermon type thing, and the guys would laugh at it. So I think those three things between the the lighting of the fragrance. The meditation and the mental part and the visualization and then the book part were all three things that I thought were big team building, mental building, and just overall success. It just a little thing that played a big part. Excellent.